Hello, this is a video to shoot with part, part 2 tutorial presented by the ACHL TV reference Atlas of Histologian Function and Clinical Correlation by Document Q. So, we continue here with stratified cuboidal epithelium. We said initially before that when you are stratified, you are containing in multiple layers of cells. And when your cuboidal epithelium is stratified, cuboidal epithelium is going to have cuboidal cell at the uppermost layer. So this is a diagrammatic represent. This is a, um, a histological representation of a stratified cuboidal epithelium. And the stratified cuboidal epithelium are taken from dogs of salivary gland. After you, at the end of each of this tutorial, we're going to show. I'm going to show you. Um, uh, at the end of this tutorial, I'm going to show you. Um, the, the location of each of the epithelial tissues in the different part of the body. So for this tissue, it has been taken from the ducts of the salivary gland. So, so it has been taken from the ducts of the salivary gland. You can see these are the ducts here. These are the ducts here. These are the ducts here. This this space here is a space of the connective tissues. Where we are going to see, we are going to see later the connective tissue. So this space here are the species of ducts, and at the species of the ducts, we are going to have the stratified cuboidal epithelium. Now it's good to have a stratified cuboidal epithelium at the level of the duct, such that there is no reabsorption. Because normally, if there is only one layer of cell, there is going to be easy reabsorption into the blood vessels on that need. So that's why they need a stratified um, epithelial cell at the level of the duct, so that there is no reabsorption of the um, secreted product at the level of the ducts is it clear so that is the histological representation now the next thing so as from this you can see there is one layer down here and there is an upper layer up here the layer down here is cuboidal and the layer up here is still cuboidal is it clear? So usually this is a this now is a schematic representation of a satisfied squamous or uh, a satisfied cuboidal epithelium. So this you see down the base the base the basement membrane here, the connective tissue underneath the basement membrane. You have cuboidal cell at the first layer and then you have also cuboidal cell at the apical most layer. For you to say that it's a satisfied cuboidal epithelium, we are considering the cell at the apical most layer and not the cells at the base layer. Is it clear? So example, if you want to say that it's a satisfied squamous epithelium, the cells at the apical most layer must be flat. So in this case, it's a satisfied cuboidal epithelium because these cells at the uppermost layer are cuboidal. And to say it's cuboidal, the um, height is equal to as approximately equal to the length, and then the nucleus is spherical. Now, <clears throat> the next thing to point also on a stratified cuboidal epithelium is that stratified cuboidal epithelium usually have a two to three years, a two to three layer. It is not more than two to three layer. Now, the clinical correlation of stratified cuboidal. Since this is a stratified cuboidal epithelium of the salivary gland, we are going to see clinical presentation as um, stratified uh, salivary gland swelling due to um, a salivary gland swelling due to a calculus. Now, salivary gland swelling is with inflammation. What is inflammation of salivary gland? Inflammation of salivary gland is called saladenitis. It's a clinical condition. Salivary gland swelling occurs when there is blockage of a duct. Usually, you may have uh, inflammation of the salivary gland due to blockage of the ducts, or you may not have due to blockage of the duct, but usually it's due to blockage of a, of a ducts. Now, when it is not due to a blockage of the duct, you have cases like mumps. And when it is due to blockage of the duct, it's other cases, other infectious, um, no, infectious um, pathogens in the normal flora. Now, so the blockage of the duct usually is, is as a result of a stone or a calculus. So how how do you visualize that um, that stone or calculus on histology? So we visualize it on histology when you have the histology the biopsy of the salivary dog, you're going to see stones in the lumen. You see stones in the lumen, and then the cell at the apical mostly are going to be distorted cuboidal cell, and at the connective tissues, you're going to have inflammatory cells such as granulocytes and lymphocytes. 
so that is exactly the those are the elements the elements here that you have on your histo pathology <coughs> now the second satisfied epithelium that going to, the next satisfied epithelium that i'm going to speak about is the satisfied columnar epithelium and the satisfied columnar epithelium has been taken from the palpebral conjunctiva so this cut you need to know that what the satisfied columnar epithelium is very rare and one of the locations where it is it is it is found in we have the conjunctiva of the eyelid and not any conjunctiva it is the palpebral conjunctiva 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 so you need to know that what the conjunctiva has two main parts the conjunctiva it is what is first the conjunctiva it is just a membrane that lines the um, the cornea and it also lines the palpebra it, also, it lines the eyelid and the cornea is it clear that is the conjunctiva the conjunctiva if you just see so that that just a small membrane that lies on your cornea and there is a small membrane that lies inside the eyelid so the erect part of the eyelid is the conjunctiva now the part that lies the inside portion of the eyelid is the palpebral conjunctiva why the part that lies the cornea that lies on the cornea is called the bulbous conjunctiva now this satisfied columnar epithelium is lining the palpebral um, conjunctiva and this is how it looks like so in this case you have um, a histologic view on this histologic view of the palpebral conjunctiva of the eye so in this case you have a satisfied columnar epithelium you see here these are the basal cells here here this is the connective tissue and at the apical most layer you are going to have columnar cells that is why it is called satisfied columnar epithelium <coughs> now the schematic representation of this is that you have connective tissue you have basement membrane then you have the basal cells which are usually cuboidal cells and then the apical muscles are going to be columnar cells basically so now this is the diagnostic presentation and need to know that we satisfied columnar epithelium just like satisfied cuboidal epithelium have cuboidal cells at the, at the which is closer to the basement membrane and it also have two to three cell layer thick just that now at the columnar part they went the the, the the cells at the apical layer said to be columnar because they are higher than wider and then they are taller than wider wider and then their nuclei is elongated um elongated longitudinally now the clinical correlation of satisfying columnar epithelium in the eyelid is trachoma so what is trachoma Trashoma is a chronic contagious conjunctivitis, that's inflammation of the conjunctiva. So when you have a chronic contagious conjunctivitis, mm, which, um, so which is due to chlamydia trashomatis, that is a trashoma. A chronic contagious conjunctivitis is due to chlamydia trashomatis, is trashoma now the clinical presentation is usually a keratoconjunctivitis that is the dry eye which is inflamed now how do you visualize um how do you visualize trachoma or on the on, on the histopathology so on histopathology you are going to have granulated surface when i say granulated surface what do i mean by that the granulated surface just means that it contains granulation tissues is it clear? Granulation tissues are just um, tissues of connective tissues. So to say they are they are they are immature connective tissues, granulation tissues, containing red blood cells, containing immature fibroblasts, containing mast cells, containing neutrophils. So that those are granulation tissues. Now that's the first thing you're going to see. The second thing you're going to see. So at the apical mostly you're going to have granulation tissues in trash trash trashoma. It's also called trachitis. The second thing you have 
inclusion bodies inside the columnar cells you're going to have inclusion bodies inside the apical musculomnar cells and also the basal cuboidal cells of the satisfied columnar epithelium you are going to have macrophages in the um, in the connective tissue and you are going to have lymphocytes so at those are the, the histopathological basic of traction the next thing that you can you have as the um, uh, epithelial tissue is transitional epithelium Mm, transitional epithelium is stratified epithelium but made up of transitional cells so transitional epithelium as we have already said before it is made up of dome shaped cells at the apical most layer when they are relaxed but when they are uh, when it is containing when the urinary tract is containing uh, but when it is tense like in case when the urinary tract contains fluid, it is going to be flattened shape. This is why you can sometimes call it just stratified squamous. You can conf you can confuse it with stratified squamous epithelium, just like this. So this is the schematic representation. Here, this is the histologic representation. We here with the dome cells at the apical most layer, and then the basal cells have different morphology. As you can see here, this is a schematic representation. Schematic representation is the relaxed form. In the relaxed form, you have what? You have the cells at the apical most layer, they are doom shape. But when they are distended, they become um, stratified squamous epithelium because the cells at the apical most layer are now uh, flattened. This is it clear? So that those are the characteristics. So now, in summary, let's visualize the summary of each of the squamous epithelium. So the first thing is the types of epithelium. Mm. So we have seen you have these types of epithelium. You have the simple squamous epithelium. So for all the simple, the number of layers is going to be one, 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 one. Now for pseudo stratify also. The number of layer is one as I've, as I've told you and for stratify now in stratify now squamous you have several layers meaning it can be six it can be seven it can be eight there are several layers but for stratified cuboidal it is usually two to three for stratified columnar it's usually two to three and for transitional epithelium it is four to six layers now the next thing is the type of cells in the epithelium now usually what they are forgotten to say here is that the cells are at the apical most part the cells is not uh, at the basement at the close to the basement membrane that apical most part not the basal part so for simple squamous epithelium the cells are going to be flattened and they are squamous epithelial cells for simple cuboidal epithelium, the cells are going to be cuboidal cells. That is, the height is equal to the width. Here, the width is greater than the height. Now, for simple columnar epithelium, they are mostly using absorptive, and then they are at their height is going to be greater than the width. They are made columnar cells. For pseudo satisfy, for pseudo satisfy, what happened here is we have cells that have different height and their nuclei are having different um, position with reference to the basement membrane but all of the cells touch the basement membrane that is why it is thought that it is stratified but it's not actually stratified it's pseudo stratified that's that's pseudo for falsely it is falsely stratified now the next thing that you have to visualize is a stratified uh, squamous epithelium. For stratified squamous epithelium is going to be, um, uh, is, uh, we've said with several layers. Now at the basal area, it is the cells are much more cuboidal. At the middle layer, the cells are much more polygonal. And at the upper layer, it is flattened. For stratified cuboidal epithelium, basal and upper layer is cuboidal. For stratified columnar epithelium, the basal layer is going to be cuboidal, and then the apical most layer is going to be columnar. And then for transitional epithelium, the basal layer is going to be cuboidal, the middle layer is going to be polygonal, and the uppermost layer is going to be dome shaped. Now we continue the next point now with the apical surface. So what is on the apical surface of each of these? <clears throat> 
So for the apical surface, you need to point out that the apical surface of the simple squamous epithelium is going to be smooth for that of simple cuboid that it is smooth but they also have short microvilli that is it may be rough so they are short microvilli you have at the apical surface you have short microvilli it may be smooth or it may have short microvilli it may have long microvilli like it's stereocilia in the um, tubules the renal tubules now you have simple columnar epithelium. It is mostly having microvilli and may also have cilia in some location. And where it has cilia is when it is located at the level of the fallopian tubes, where you have simple columnar epithelium with cilia. Is it clear? Now, pseudo stratified columnar epithelium mostly it contains cilia, the apical mostly layer. It may also contain stereocilia in some location. It contains cilia at the level of uh, so the certified um, columnar epithelium contains cilia at the level of the uh, respiratory tract is it clear and then it contains stereocilia at the level of the epididymis for the reabsorption of materials <coughs> Now for stratify for the next one is stratify squamous epithelium. For stratified squamous epithelium can either contain apical muscle can either be keratinized or non-keratinized. Keratinized the cells at the apical muscle are going to be death. They have no nucleus and then non-keratinized the cells at the upper muscle are living, that is they have a nuclei. They have nuclei. So for satisfy um, cuboidal epithelium mostly as smooth at the uppermost layer because it made up ducts. For satisfy columnar epithelium mostly is smooth, usually located where at the conjunctiva. For transitional epithelium at most at upper apical muscle layer is going to be transitional. Just that you need to know that it may be rough because it may turn dome shape and it may not be dome shape at the different locations. So now these are the locations now of the different cell layers of the different epithelial tissues. The location of the simple squamous epithelium, we have the cornea, so it can be located at the level of the cornea. We have the blood and lymphatic vessels. We have um, um, the body cavities like the mesothelium in the case of the pleura, the pericardia, the peritoneal cavity and the alveoli. For the simple cuboidal epithelium, they are going to be located in the renal tubules, particularly the ones that have long microvilli. They are located in the thyroid follicles, particularly the ones that are smooth. They are located in small ducts. So this is when they are only when you only have small ducts before you can have a simple cuboidal epithelium. But if you have a long duct, it is instead going to be satisfied cuboidal epithelium. So because just because we don't want that the simple cuboidal epithelium, which is only one layer thick, should reabsorb the element of the duct. That's why it's better to have a satisfied cuboidal epithelium such that there is no reabsorption of the element of the which is found inside the lumen of the ducts. So we have the small dogs of the exocrine, it may also be found in small of the exocrine gland and also the surface of the ovaries. So those are the location of the simple cuboidal epithelium. Now the simple columnar epithelium, most of the digestive tract, the gallbladder, the oviducts, so we duck at the fallopian tube and mostly the one in the oviduct is going to be the one that is ciliated. The one in the digestive gland is the one that has most microvilli. Um, and then we have the ductuli efferents. The ductuli efferents do not have fibre. Um, um, they may have cilia, but no microbe like the ductuli efferents. That's the vast efferents. <coughs> now, the pseudo satisfied columnar epithelium. For pseudo satisfied columnar epithelium, it's mostly ciliated. So, so, for those which are mostly ciliated, it's going to be the one which are located in the respiratory tract. Now, those in the ductus deferens and the epididymis are contained stereocilia for the reabsorption of the material which were produced in the semiferous tubules. Now, the next one is stratified squamous epithelium. For stratified squamous epithelium, um, you may have keratinized or non-keratinized. Now, when you are in the epidermis of the skin, it is usually keratinized when it is located at the palms and the soles of the foot and other parts of the tough part of the skin. Now, for non keratinized it is much more going to be in the mucous surfaces like the oral cavity, the epiglottitis, epi the vagina, and then the surfaces. Now, for satisfied cuboidal epithelium, 
for strike over the time is going to be located now in large dogs when you have small dog you have simple cobalt epithelium but large dog you have um just like cobalt epithelium like for the salivary gland that you have seen, you have seen above we have dog you have the sweat gland so you can also be found there now the next one now we have satisfied columnar epithelium for satisfied columnar epithelium it is much more also located on large dogs but it is less extensive than the satisfied cuboidal epithelium we have the conjunctiva of the eye and also 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 going to be present now the next one is transitional epithelium usually formed in the urinary tract the last thing element of that our difference is going to be um, the function of each of them <coughs> for simple satisfied epithelium the function is going to be in fluid transport lubrication and exchange for simple cuboidal epithelium the function is going to be absorption secretion and transportation for simple columnar epithelium the function is going to be secretion absorption like in the digestive tract protection like in the oviduct and the um, ductular effluence for transportation for simple columnar epithelium secretion like in the case of the respiratory tract where you have um, goblet cells that can, can secrete mucus you have transportation like in the case of the respiratory tract and the ductus effluence and you have absorption like in the case of the epithelium where it's going to absorb um, when it has stereo cilia so this function depends on what it contains for transport transport is just um, the, the the normal function of an epithelial tissue now if the apical most layer is much more smooth it's going to be used in transport is it clear now if the apical most layer contain microvilli or stereocilia is going to be used in absorption if the apical most layer contains um, 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 cilia it can be used in also transportation of materials is it clear and if the apical most layer is um, smooth it is lubrication so so those are the elements you can put in mind so if the apical most layer is so you can just cram it as such if the apical most layer is smooth <coughs> then it is used in lubrication if the apical most layer is um, containing cilia it is used in transportation so if it is smooth it's lubrication and or transportation if it contains cilia it is used in transportation if it contains microvilla it is used in absorption and if it contains um, uh, my, microvilla and stereocilia is used in absorption so those are the different elements and also secretion so these are the elements so let's see you have uh, the simple columnar epithelium it is containing microvilli that's for absorption it's going to be also smooth for protection for transport and secretion depending on where it is located still do satisfy you have seen that now justify squamous epithelium mostly is used for protection for justify cobalt epithelium mostly is used for transport because it's located mostly in ducts for satisfied columnar epithelium, most is used for transport and protection. Protection for the eye, transport for the large dogs. For transitional epithelium, it is mostly used for transport in the urinary tract and also for protection against distensive because it has distensibility property. So we have seen the part two of epithelial tissue, and then our next chapter is going to be glands. Thanks for your attention.